The other week we did a video looking at some of the new features of Luminar Neo, but that was a pre-release version of the software, and I did say at the time Skylum had already confirmed that when the, the public release was launched that there would be some new features in it, and then subsequently some more new features after that. Well, we've at least got the public version with some of the new features that we're going to take a look at today. Layers is the big one for me. Before that, though, sort of on the topic of Skylum, I do want to just quickly talk about what's going on in Ukraine at the moment. Now, I don't want to go down the politics route of all of this, but suffice to say, with any war or conflict, there are always you know, bystanders that get caught up in it, namely most of the civilian population. And Skylum are actually kind of tied up in all this because they were founded by a Ukrainian. Their main technical office, the development office, is in Kiev, which is right in the middle of the conflict that's going on at the moment. And so they put out an email the other day and there's a page on their website asking people to consider donating to support Ukraine. Not donate to them directly but to the charities and the organizations that are over there and trying to help with the growing humanitarian problems so really for anyone who wishes to make a donation i will leave a link to skylum's page down below which has a list of all of the associated charities that you can help support one in particular the international red cross is the one that i'm going to be supporting and any advertising revenue that i make from this video i will be pledging to them as well so let's take a look at luminar neo but i'm gonna have to put you down for this the majority of the pre-release version that i looked at is the same now with the public version. All these tools down the right side are, are all pretty much exactly the same. There's really two main differences with this version to the one I looked at the other week, which is firstly, presets have been added. Now, some people will be happy about that. I'd said in the last video that there were no presets in Luminar Neo, namely because there weren't at the time, but I'd got the impression from the talks that I'd had with Skylum that they weren't doing presets in Luminar Neo, that it was it was to be more focused around the photographer making all of the decisions themselves. Seemingly, that's not been the case. I don't know whether I've misunderstood what they were talking about, but there is a presets tab on the right-hand side, and the presets tab looks very similar to that found in Luminar AI. Namely, the software scans your picture to work out what it is. So it'll recognize with this one that it's a, a landscape photo and there's a, a lot of sky involved. And then it will then suggest collections of relevant presets for you. So it's suggested the artistic or it's suggested natural skies. And then you click on that collection and there's a list of varying different ones. So like after hours, for example. So for those who weren't happy in response to the last video that I did when I said that there weren't presets, all's good, there are presets. Now, in that last video, I also made no reference to the performance of Luminar, namely because it was a pre-release version and I didn't know how much things were going to change. Well, now it's a public version, I can at least comment on it. It's definitely quicker than Luminar 4 and Luminar AI, with both of those, I noted comparing to Lightroom, neither were as lightning fast. You know, with Lightroom, you pull a slider and it just, bang, instantly appears on the screen, the, the changes that you've made. Luminar, you didn't get that. You'd make a change with some of the sliders and there'd be a, a lag, a delay. Sometimes it would be quite a noticeable delay. Now, some of that is quite understandable when you consider how Luminar is working. With the likes of Lightroom, you make a change. It's just making global changes across the entire picture. Luminar is using an AI engine to assess the picture and make changes based on what it's seeing. So, for example, the structure tool is similar to the clarity in Lightroom, but you pull a clarity slider in Lightroom and it's just going to blast everything. With this, you make a change and it's scanning the picture to work out what bits of the picture it wants to target with the structure and what it thinks should be left alone. 
So that is obviously going to take a, a few seconds for it to try and work everything out. So speed-wise, it's not quite up to Lightroom, but it's forgivable. The overall performance of this, though, is definitely quicker. It's more responsive when you're making changes. There are still some lags sometimes. The biggest difference for me, though, I've seen in terms of the speed performance is the exports. The exports in Luminar 4 and Luminar AI compared to Lightroom were painfully slow. I ran a test yesterday with... Uh, the same raw file, I put the same edits to it in AI, Lightroom, and Neo, and exported them all and timed how long it took to, from me clicking export to the final image being exported. Lightroom took 3.5 seconds to export, Luminar AI took 15 seconds. That's how painfully slow it is. This was able to do it in four and a half seconds, so a little bit slower than Lightroom, but a hell of a lot quicker than we've seen previously. The export times do seem to vary depending on obviously what formats you're exporting in, but also how much of an edit that you're putting in place. But things are quicker with Neo, which is sort of ironic, really, because Skylum's touted Neo as being the heavy, hard-hitting, in-depth editor that lets you do a whole host of stuff, whereas AI is more preset orientated, the quick slider edits without going too in depth. So I think they want Neo to be the extreme editor, AI to be the quick editor. Except all of the tools that you can find in Luminar AI, you can find in Neo. And Neo does everything quicker. So Neo is actually a faster editor to use than Luminar AI. Anyway, the big, big change for Neo so far, like I say, I, I do believe Skylum are bringing more stuff out in the not-too-distant future. The big new improvement, though, is layers, which I was so thrilled to hear when they announced that they were, they were bringing layers, because it's something that I'd mentioned to them in the past. With the Luminar 4... You you could you know you could do sky replacement. That was the big tool for Luminar 4, which was good. They took it a step further in Luminar AI when they added the augmented sky option that let you drop objects in, like a moon or the aurora or clouds or birds or plane, hot air balloons, whatever. You could drop objects in, but you could only ever drop one at a time. And sometimes I was playing around and wanted to do like an extreme edit to a picture and drop multiple objects in. But I couldn't do multiple objects. I had to do one object, export the picture, re-import that picture, put another object on, export, re-import, and so on and so forth. And if I made a mistake at any point, I had to go back and start over. They've now added a layers feature. So on the left-hand side, you've got the option for layers. You've got your, your base picture that you're editing and then you've got an option here for add new layer. You click on that, they give you a bunch of presets that you can choose from. You've got flares, light leaks, stardust bokeh, sparklers. So you click on one of those, it will drop it on for you. You can change the opacity, you can change the blend mode, you can flip it and rotate it or crop it down. You can then right click and hide the layer or reshow the layer if you want, or you can also right click and remove the layer entirely. If you don't want to use their preset pictures, you can obviously add your own in. You can click back up here and there's an option for my images. You can click on that and select what image you want. The only negative of this is that you can't seemingly import raw files as an additional layer. You can have a raw file as your base layer for the picture, but any images that you want to put over the top of it have to be in either JPEG, PNG or TIFFs, which is a bit of a ball ache. For example, I knew I wanted to test the layers feature of this out. So last week I was over in Ireland, wasn't there for doing photographs, but I had the camera with me anyway, and we got like a half an hour of clear skies. I went down to the local lake and took these two pictures with stacked focus, specifically because I knew I wanted to, to use layers and, and stack them together. Ten minutes later, it clouded over. So they're not the best pictures, but I've got this photo which is focused on the foreground, and then this one is focused on the sky. Now, the photo that's focused on the sky, I've already exported as a TIFF file, so I didn't make any edits to it. I've literally just imported it as a RAW file, straight away exported it as a TIFF. So if I now go onto the foreground focus shot and go onto the Edit tab, 
So on the left hand side, click on the plus sign for the for the new layers, and then I've already imported it here. If I hadn't, I'd have clicked on the plus sign for add a new picture, found the TIFF file, imported it, but I've already got it there, so I'm gonna click on that, and it now gives me the two layers on the left hand side. So sky focused, hide layer, foreground focused. Now you can add more layers if you want, so you can just click back on add new layer and pick another picture. And then when it does that, you can then change the order sequence for any of the additional layers. You can't move the base layer, that has to remain the same, but all the other layers you can reorder if you wish. And I, I don't think there's a limit as to how many you can add, so you can go extreme with it, but for this I'm going to keep it basic, we're going to stick with just the two pictures. I want to keep showing the sky for the top layer, but I want to show the foreground of the bottom layer. So I've got the top layer selected, I'm going to come over to the right side under layer properties and say add mask, and then I'm just going to paint over the sky, and that's it. So it's now masking out the bottom half of the top layer to reveal what's underneath it. I've not fussed too much about the tree, but you can obviously do whatever you like. But that's a basic stack done. Now, here we come on to my real gripe with the layers setup of Luminar Neo, which is that's just the two raw files now stacked together. Okay, great. Now I want to edit it up. All right, so I'm going to say I want to... I'm going to put that preset back on, the Natural Skies preset. So I'm going to I'm gonna put the After Hours on. But it's only done it on the one. And if you go on the bottom layer and click on a preset, it adds a preset to the bottom layer. Which is a bit of a ball ache, because it means that you have to edit each of your layers individually. You can't do a global edit to the entire picture. If you take Photoshop, for example, with that, you can put a, ch a change in place like, you know, brightness and contrast or color saturation, and you can clip it to a particular layer so those edits are only show to that one layer, or you can reorder everything and put it and put the edits above all the layers, and it makes changes to everything that's visible. That feature's missing from here, at least for now. If I say I want to increase the exposure a little bit, it's only making the change to the one layer that's selected. I think I, I would prefer to see a feature whereby you could select either one of the layers and then you could make some changes to that layer, but there was then an option above it for universal changes so that you could just edit the entire picture. As it is with this, if I wanted to edit the entire picture, what I would then have to do is export this picture with the two layered masks as a finished picture, say a TIFF file, and then re-import it and then make the changes. But that then is basically like flattening the image. So if I've then decided later on that actually my masking, my layers aren't quite how I want them to be, I've got to go back and start again. A little bit of a pisser. So Neo definitely seems to be a step up in terms of what's on offer. It's definitely quicker, it's got more features, it's got better features, but there's still refinements to be made. It does still sometimes hesitate, you make a change and it doesn't seem to react properly. I've noticed sometimes you go to remove an edit, you reset an edit on the tabs here, it doesn't always reset them. You've sometimes then got to go into the edits tab and change them through there instead. Small bugs, not the end of the world, but definitely areas that could be refined. Now, like I say, Skylum have already mentioned that there are more updates in the pipeline which are going to be bringing changes and new features. But, you know, I will be mentioning all of this to Skylum in the hope that these changes do get made at some point. Obviously, I don't know, though, uh, how the current uh, political situation is going to impact Skylum's operations. At the moment, they say that they're working as normal, but I don't know the structure to know which offices are being impacted by how much. But there you are. And for anyone who is interested in acquiring Luminar Neo, there is an affiliated link to it down below, as well as the 
links to Skylum's page for donations if you are interested. So that is going to conclude this video. As always, if you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. While you're down there, if you found this video helpful and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.